And today I'm going to show you how to render this fireplace. So it's pretty much the same process what you're doing if you were rendering outside. We've got sand cement and what we're going to do is future proof this fireplace. So the idea is he doesn't know whether he's going to get a log burner in. What we're going to do is render it properly to make sure we're going to allow for it in the future. This is why we're not dot and dabbing or maybe using like a hard wall product. So to give you a quick update, what I've done is put a slurry on. This is basically just SBR mixed with some cement and I've just coated it on the bricks and this way it gives it a bit of a key. So when it comes to applying a render, we've got a nice bit of grab, you know it's going to be solid, I mean, you know you know it's going to be a good product to, uh, to render on top of. So I've got the scratch coat sorted in here, this is going to consist of two coats, we've got the scratch coat and we've got the finish coat. And basically, like I said, we're just going to apply it directly to the bricks, happy days. Okay, so before we start, I'm just going to point something out. A lot of people use, you know, spirit levels when you're working to make sure everything's right. So if I put this against the wall, just to make it level, that's, that's how far out we'd have to go. So I won't be using levels on this tutorial. You should do at all times, but this is, how old is this house, Dan? Uh, 350 years. Okay, so this house is 350 years old. I think it's fell like a thousand inches. It's probably halfway underground now. So we won't be using this today. So for uh, anyone who's going to give me a bit of jip, it's because it's pr pretty much impossible to make right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put the scratch coat on for the rest of this wall, and then I'm going to show you how to scratch it, and then we're going to get ready for the future stages. So when we're rendering, you tend to work, I'm right-handed, so I always hold a trowel in the right hand. What you do is right to left, and you always start from the top, that way if you're going to drop any render, you can catch it from underneath. So we're going to do render right to left, and that way when I'm rendering, when I drop anything, I can catch it on the hook. So we're going to take the render off, apply it, and when you are rendering, make sure you put a lot of pressure into it. We want to dig the render into the brickwork. We want to make sure it's got a nice, strong bond. If you don't, It'll make it what we call it drummy, which is where the render comes loose away from the brick. So you've got your line there, we're going to trowel into it. And then across. And then a good way to get to the top. Take it to the top edge of your trowel and render it in. Again to the other side if that helps. We're just getting a nice coat of render onto the brickwork there. And one thing you don't want to do in a render, you don't want to play with it too much. If you keep playing with the render with your trowel, what you're going to do is you're going to bring the moisture from the back to the front and that's going to give it less of a grip to the brick we're applying it to. You want to put it on and then if you, are, if you want to adjust it, use a straight edge. This is a scratch coat. We're not going to make sure it's completely level but I probably will run a rule on and I'll show you that in a minute. So we'll get it on and you leave it. Maybe I've tried it on once or twice but don't keep playing with it. It'll just make it worse. So we're just going to get this last bit of render on. Got a little scratch here. If you've got any areas where the brickwork was really shallow, before you apply a scratch, just throw some in, scratch it up, and that way we can build upon any low spots. Is there a reason you've not done the sides? On the sides here. So basically I'm just working around again right to left. And what I'm doing because it's a scratch coat, I'm just gonna make sure that the um, I'm just gonna keep the overhangs, keep them there, because when I do come to rendering it, I can curve it in as together and then scratch it as one. 
So at the moment it's gonna look quite messy. I'm gonna come round, do the top, but I just wanna flatten this first with a rule. I wanna try and get this relatively flat. We're not gonna to be too pedantic. A lot of people don't even rule a scratch coat. I just find it makes the top coat a lot easier. So that's off. Get my trusty, this is a feather edge. This is basically a straight edge. I'm going to curl the feather edge because it comes to a point. That way when we are ruling off, it's a lot easier to deal with. This is what I always use and recommend you do the same. So don't be too crazy, but take away any high spots. You know, we're not, we're not making it perfect, but it also is good practice for when you do your top coat. This is going to be a major thing, and when we come to the later stages, this is probably going to be the biggest thing that makes your wall flat. We don't do it by hand, we don't use a trowel to make a wall flat. It's always a straight edge, always. So, you know, if you've never used it before, have a little practice on your scratch coat. It's good, it helps for the top coat, and it gives you a bit of, you know, a bit of experience. As you can see, we've got the side rendered as well. Now this is the easy bit. This is called scratcher. And yeah, it does just scratch lines into it. It's pretty obvious. You dig it in. You don't want to go too deep. You don't want to go all the way to your brick. But you do want enough of a scratch where the next coat is going to grip nicely into that. So as you can see, you'll probably see what you want your depth to be, depth to be like. You just literally just do some wavy lines. The waves help the top coat bind. I mean, this is usually out, outside you'd be doing this because there's not going to be much temperature change inside, so you don't have to worry too much. But you always need to put a scratch on, always, because this is what your top coat is going to grip to. If you don't put this, when it comes to rendering your top coat, it'll just slide off. So always make sure you do this. I did that mistake once and it was a nightmare. <laughs> it didn't go down very well. So always put a nice scratch on. Don't go too deep and that's all you have to worry about. Easy. Okay, so I've got a few things to point out. The next part of the videos, unfortunately, have been filmed the wrong way. So there'll be a bit of the screen missing, but the content is still solid, so don't worry. And the other thing is, you'll notice on the video that at the front, there were some bricks that were left. They do had paint on. If you are going to render on paint, what I would recommend is you always try and get rid of the paint first. So you grind it off, and then what you do is you use the SBR on top of that. And again, you can make the slurry which is basically SBR mixed with cement. But you always, always remove paint before you apply any render, just because that way you've got a strong key. If you don't, you're only as strong as the weakest link. So if the paint comes away, the render comes off with it. So that's just a quick tip that I thought to say. And also in the next clip, you notice that the ceiling has been skimmed. Um, so for more information on plastering, normal plastering, we say plastering products for a finish. Just sign up to our welcome course, we'll show you how to plaster, we'll show you how to plaster a wall from start to finish, show you how to mix, and we'll do everything, we'll show everything you need to know. So that's it, cool. Okay, so now we're on the next stage of rendering. Come back a day later, you can see the scratch coat is fully cured. Just give it a quick light haze with a sprayer. Just give it a bit of water before we actually start applying the render, that means it's going to have a bit more of a key when it comes to sticking our top coat to the scratch coat. We've already got a few bits on. Um, so basically we've got a new mix on and I'll quickly talk to you about the mix. I'm going to show a separate video on this in the future but because I'm doing a fireplace we need to have a weaker amount of cement. So the first mix of scratch coat yesterday was five sand, one cement, one lime. The lime is so when if we do get a fire in the lime will have flexibility so when the heat does start, it's going to allow it to contract and expand. Now today's, which is a top coat, we always need the top coat to be weaker than the scratch coat. And by that I mean we need less cement content. So today we've got six sand, one cement, one line. That way, we've got a weaker cement, but that way if we put the top coat on, if we have a stronger cement content on the top coat, the scratch will actually crack the top. So that's that. Again, I'll show another video on it, but for now, that's what we're working with. Okay, so we're going to use the same technique as yesterday. I'm just going to give you a quick demo on how to put it on. 
And quickly before we start, on this fireplace we're not going to actually use any corner beads. I'm going to form all the angles myself, so do it old school. And so I'll give you a quick tutorial on that coming up within this video. And the next video is coming up, I actually use scratch beads for some rendering. So you'll have two options, fortunately there'll be no bead shown today. So the same thing, when we're applying a render, firm pressure, push it in, nice and tight. I'm really pushing it into that scratch coat. Some more in there. Again, we don't want to play with it too much, but we want to get a nice, even coverage. And then this coat is where we start to get it flat. This is where we really start using the straight edge. So yesterday you might have had a practice, you might have given it a go. Today is where we've actually got to start perfecting it. Because I'm going to be forming the edges, I want a bit of I want a bit of render overhanging there, just on that side, so I've already rendered that. We want a bit of overhang, and we want that to take up on the corner. I'm going to show you why in a minute. For now, the main focus is to get the render on the wall. Okay, so we've got this on. Again, don't play with it. Don't try and get it flat with your trowel, it's not going to work. You'll just create a bit of a weak point for the render. So we're going to do, now this is where we really want to get it flat. Take your feather edge, we're going to run it one way. See where it's sitting. So you can see there's a few Take that off that way. Then you want to take the excess. Try to throw it back in your bucket. Try and keep it if you can. We're also going to run it the other way. There's a massive dip in the middle. Quite a high spot there. I'm going to pull it back. Okay. So if you look on the wall, you can see there's a section which hasn't been ruled off. And do is take a bit of render. So don't try and get it nice, just pour an amount on and try and put more on actually if we can. I'm just going to straighten that top out. I'm going to a little bit of a line there, I'm not happy with. Check it that way. Okay, so I've got most of it ruled, most of it on, so we see the side working the edges. And all of it, like I said before, has been 
hard form. So I'm going to show you how to create an angle with just the straight edge and the render. Like I said before, we want these overlaps of render. So when you're applying it, I've just put the render on this side of the pillar. We want it overlapping on the side here. And then what we want is we want to get a straight edge, try and put it in place where it's in line with our ruled wall. So we know this is where it wants to be. So you gauge, you travel, roughly put the straight edge where it needs to be. Push your straight edge in with your hand. Before I've done this, I've also wetted it up, so I've put a lot of water on this straight edge here. And I'm going to show you why. What we're going to do is put, we're applying lots of pressure to this straight edge against this side of the wall. This has also been ruled off, so it's also straight. And you're just going to fill in any areas where it's behind. So that actually needs to come out a little bit. Yeah, so now we're straight again. We're just going to fill them bits in. That's excess from before. That can go in there. And just, if there's any excess, take it back with the edge of your trowel. We literally rule it, using our trowel as a rule now. I just want to get a nice, clean, crisp edge. Now I'm going to rule that bit, that's a bit high. I'm going to hold that, get the excess fat. Again, I'm doing as if you've got one. Usually work with two people, it's a lot easier. I'm just going to rule that bit off. trowel down, hold it with both hands and you tilt the back edge and tilt the back edge of the straight edge, pull it away. If you come here you'll see now, I've got to do the same to the other side, you'll see you've got the beginning of a straight edge there. I'm going to do the same, put a straight edge on this side, do the same on there and then what you'll have is similar to this side where you've got both sides being relatively straight, in theory ideal, that's how you get, that's how you form an angle with a straight edge. Okay, so I quickly thought I'd show you how I did this steps, I've put a layer on the render at the top, put your straight edge, I've wet this straight edge right up, put it underneath, what I'm going to do is put it roughly where it needs to be, so it's equal distance from the back to the front. I'll rule off. Got that bit there. You pull it out. And you do the same with the underside. So you put it on roughly where you put the line. Try and get it as close as you can. And using pointing trowel, I render underneath. I've got the hole right next to me with the render on, so I've got easy access. And this is just a bit of timber. Put a bit of water on it before I started, and that way when we pull it away. We know that it's not going to take the render with it, in theory. So I'm going to use that as a scraper, scrape the high spot, clean up the back edge, pull away, lift up, pull back. Now with the front edge, use the edge of my trowel very gently. Scrape it back. So on that edge, that edge dropping. If it does, try and push the render in. I've got a bit on this side actually. And 
and what happens, we'll get the main shape now now when it comes to us floating it that's when we perfect it and now the shape's there and we'll do the same with the top, this top's going to get cut back so we're just going to put it roughly in line it's going to be a bit of timber running all the way across that brick there I'm just going to cut a line in so as well as putting it back, you can equally, equally cut the render and that's how you get that line running all the way through I do the bricks, I do the angles I'm going to follow it through with the last two underneath the same process and then we'll come to the stage where we start floating and sponging the wall Okay, so this is part of the rendering where we come to the stage where it's called floating. So we've got the render on, we've ruled it flat. This is where now we have to get rid of this texture. We're going to try and compress the render, push it in tight. This not only strengthens it, but also makes it flatter as an, as an overall. So what you do is, you've got to wait for it to be touch dry. So when you put your finger in, it doesn't go in too far. If, it come, if your finger goes into the render, you know it's too soon. So what you want is you want to be able to keep your front float flat to the wall, keep firm pressure and you're going to rub it in circular motions. And what that does is it closes in the pores which we pulled off when we, was, when we were ruling and it makes a nice smooth surface. Not only that, but if you've got low spots, it's going to pull the render from the high spots and fill in any low areas. So not only is it making it aesthetically pleasing, but it's also making the wall a lot flatter. So I've got a bucket trowel full of mud, which we've seen before. We're going to take a bit, literally take a bit of the render you're using before, squeeze it in, and rub it into any areas that are low. These are a few low spots here, because when we're floating it, it's not filling. Take your render, Don't be scared to take some bits off. You'll feel where you float with time. You might feel a few hills or ridges. And then you want to be pulling them back. If you take your render off, don't be scared. Fill in the tops. I'm just closing these gaps in. If you find that when you come to the render it's, it's too dry, give it a spray of water, give it a light haze, it'll come back. It's not like plaster where you have one chance, you've got loads of chances of this. It's brilliant stuff. I've already worked this corner, I've done that, I've done the other side. I'll show you how soon, I'm going to show you how to float an angle. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to form this angle and I'm going to try and float that 90 degree angle in. I've got a smaller straight edge here, it's literally just a bit of timber, threw some water on. And what you do is you hold that tight again, put your render on, I've got a load of excess render on the float. Render it in. 
sorry, flow it in. actually feel a bit of a dip there so what I'm doing a little of a ridge I'm pulling it from the ridge and trying to fill it into the gap but yeah so let's try and throw it in where you can it's obviously my hands taken <laughs> Same process, we're going to tilt it at the back edge, pull it forward, and there, and you've got the straight edge. Run it along the same line, and then repeat it. I like to use a smaller straight edge just because you've got more control with a little one like this. Make sure this is flush with that wall so when we're floating we're floating over the edge and that's going to create that line and fill in any gaps between that and the straight edge. Again, tilt the back edge, pull it and you're left with a nice, nice angle. That's it. Got a bit on the trail there. Bit of render on my float. Line it up. Push tight. And then fill. Okay, so we floated it. We floated this angle in here. Now it's come to the final stage. It's called sponging. You get your sponge, I've wrung all the water out of it. It's dry, you know what I mean? I don't want any moisture coming from this to this anymore. We just don't want to be adding any moisture to the render. What we're going to do is sponge it and it's going to give it its final finish. What you do is you hold it very gently. Like, don't push it inside. You want to hold it as if it's invisible. You just gently, gently rub it. And then what will happen She'll get the aggregate of the sand onto the surface of the render. So just gently rubbing it up. And the, you know, if you have tender loving hands, <laughs> you'll get a nicer finish. But if you're rough and rugged, like most plasters out there, I'm sure, you start getting rat tails, which is where you start getting lines, which is where the sand pulls on the surface. You really want a soft touch for this. And just literally rubbing it up and it just brings the sand to the surface of the render. Can you see it over there Dan? I'll try to come closer. Dan's a cameraman of the year by the way. Say hi Dan. Yo. <laughs> there we go, we got it. And then we're just rubbing it until it's all up to the surface. If your sponge clogs up, give it a clean, start again. For me, I'm not sure all right. You'll notice when it clogs up because it'll start pulling, and the sand will drag. At the moment, this is proving me well. Just going to finish that section there. And then with the working edges, you run it up vertically. Run it back down the other way. And that way, you'll keep your edges nice and straight and crisp. You want them to look sharp. This is a perk of doing it freehand, you get much sharper angles. They're bloody hard to do, but if you get used to them, they're good. So that's that. Right, 
little bit of bonus here. Customers just said uh, he's not sure about the texture. He wants a smoother finish. Sponge it up, same process, maybe not sponge it, but make sure you float it. Get your trowel, tuck it in tight. And this will give a smoother finish. This could obviously be skimmed though, couldn't it? But yeah, we're going to yeah. go for the uh, industrial yeah. fireplace look. Make a project out of it. So it's bringing the trowel, the steel, the thing is with steel, it always brings the moisture from the back to the front. And what it's doing, it's bringing the moisture to the front, which is allowing a smoother finish to come through. You can see it. That moisture is really coming through there. 